meaning it's the Chinese menu of DNA comprised of the deadliest species in the entire galaxy. Here's your look at the NECA toys, the Predator. This is the Armored Assassin Deluxe Action Figure. Predators have been genetically evolving themselves to be stronger, smarter, and more lethal than ever before. When a young boy accidentally activates a mysterious alien device and becomes the target of these enhanced predators, only his father and the most unlikely ragtag band of crazy ex-military agents can save him and the human race from obliteration. Now, I don't need a tape measure to tell you that this is a big boy. This is a huge NECA release. But still, you know, of course, I have to do my due diligence and still provide you guys the necessary 411. So we're going to go ahead and measure off the very tall Assassin Predator. I'm taking my tape measure far past places where I ever thought a tape measure should go for a NECA release. And stopping it right there, I think that's as good of a place as any. You're looking at a figure towering over the other NECA Predator releases, standing at a rather impressive 11.3 inches in height. So that's almost about the height of a six-scale figure release. Switching that over to centimeters, you're going to be looking at a figure that's standing 28, about 29 centimeters, 28.7 to be exact. Now, I don't have Fugitive Predator at the moment I could do size comparisons with, but I do have the next best thing. I've got the recently looked at, let me just straighten out its feet there, there we go. The most recently looked at Predator on this channel, which just happens also to be from the Predator figure line, which also happens to be Emissary Predator. Just get that to stand up, there we go. Look how tall that is. That's got to be, what, a third of a figure taller? A third of a figure taller is a safe bet. I think this one was about a little over seven inches, maybe a little seven and a half inches in height. This one's a lot taller and a lot beefier. There's a whole lot of plastic being utilized here for the Armored Assassin. So let's look at the accessories. It doesn't have as many accessories, but really to be fair, Predator figures don't have a whole lot to start off with, usually a pair of interchangeable hands, uh, a replaceable head, interchangeable head, depending on if one comes with a helmet or not. Uh, blades and a plasma caster. So really in that sense, the assassin has just as much as what you would normally expect to find with other Predator releases. So let's run through those now. Has one single blade. Generally you'll see two, but the assassin gets one. Now one is certainly at the size of this beast is much more effective than a smaller Predator trying to utilize and swing two. The blade is really highly detailed, uh, cast in uh, probably a darker coloring i can see like little things peeking through here and likely painted in silver again it's just really neat looking design to it I like the fact that it does utilize one of them because it's just like so much a calling card for the predator figures now there's a slot on the side it actually only goes on the one side this other side is going to be assigned for something else so we can go ahead and just actually just take that and uh, you just peg it in really you just slot that in place like that and now the uh, Assassin Predator has one blade. Only one blade is really what it needs to do some serious damage. It's about really the only thing that I can take away from the film as being actually something I generally enjoyed. I like the idea that the DNA, the Yujas would be continuing to enhance themselves by using DNA that they're finding all over, around the world and all around the galaxy, really, for that matter. Uh, so really, like, the taller Predator didn't really bother me too much. It was a really neat design concept. It's just a shame, really, that the rest of the movie just so much fell apart on itself. The other thing it does come with, even though it's not really armored, is it does come with its variation of a plasma caster cannon. Normally, that would be found on the top of its uh, shoulder, but here, in this case, it's actually going to be something that's going to be attached to the other wrist, the other gauntlet. I'll show you that in a second. Um, it's a little bit longer than when you normally would expect to find with the plasma caster cannons. That's a lot of C's. Uh, it does have some articulation in it. You can hinge it here, and you can also hinge it up here. You just got to be a little bit more careful with it. Just like that. And uh, you can then attach it. Let me just show you where that goes. It actually goes just on the side here. See this little hole? Take the little peg, put the peg in the little hole, and you've got yourself the plasma caster. Just a little... I don't know if you would still call it that, but it's pegged onto its 
its forearm rather than pegging itself uh, to the, the shoulder. And there you go, you can still have it firing it off. Uh, the neat thing about it though is when you take this off, if you do want to replace that hole, it kind of gives you like a little cap cover and that just fits into place. It's small, something very easily lost, I'm sure if you're not careful, but at least it's something that can cover over the hole if you don't want to have it on display. I'm going to say this right now before we kind of proceed further with this review. Uh, the, for its size, it kind of has the same sort of leg construction as uh, some of the Xenomorph figures that we've had a look at, where the hind leg actually is an opposite bend to what you normally would expect to find with the knee. As a result, though, the figure generally stands well, but you can kind of see where at some point it is going to probably give you some problems, and just by its sheer size, it does also mean from time to time it does topple over. And the last thing you want to do is for it to topple over when it's got that blade housed into its forearm. So what I actually did was... I pulled from the tickle trunk just a circular uh, pegged stand. I actually think this came with the gizmo from Gremlins 2. And uh, I just kind of I just kind of utilized that. You see how I just caught that? I just want to utilize that for displaying the figure. Like if you're going to be getting it into any creative poses or really just regular poses, because it is so top heavy of a figure, I would really most definitely recommend using a display stand just in case. The last thing you would want to do is leave this at night where it's standing on your shelf. Come down the next morning and find it's all over the floor. And it's probably all over the floor there. It's over the floor there. It's over the floor over there as well as, you know, some of the pieces hopefully, uh, unfortunately, have broken off. So I would probably suggest using uh, a display stand if you have one available, even just a little small clear stand where it doesn't have to be taking away from the figure necessarily, but uh, just for its size. And it's got some real weight to it. Uh, probably would suggest FYI to use a display stand. The other thing it comes included with, stay there, don't, don't go anywhere, it does also come with a pair of closed fists. Closed fists are fine, they're good, and in the credit of the Assassin, it's got some really extra cool details, some spikes and stuff which you normally would not find on a pair of closed fists, or really just hands in general for Predators. This one's got some extra kind of cool things going for it. So like the hands are no exception, probably not end up displaying it, I think, with these hands. Uh, eventually when I do uh, track down, find, funny enough, ironically enough, I'm talking about the Fugitive Predator being hard to find, I put it somewhere, and I don't really know whereabouts I put it, but I'm probably going to find myself very much compelled to display the Assassin Predator, probably pinning up the Fugitive Predator, I think, on a display shelf. I think it's going to be pretty cool, but I will stress this again, I'll use a display stand, I think, to pull off that look. Then last but certainly not least, we've got ourselves a neat looking head portrait, a replaceable head to the one that comes included with the figure. Well, that's not true, included with the shoulder and neck section of the figure. You can swap it out for this one right here. It kind of has all the cues for a Predator figure, uh, except again, very much more exaggerated. Even like the dreadlocks seem fierce, whereas maybe the dreads didn't seem fierce before. They're a little bit more textured. They kind of look a little bit more synthetic like something that was created in a lab. I love the gold accents though of these little bands and of course all the spiked ones that are closer to the crown of its head. It's phenomenal detailing. I love the piercing of the yellow eyes, the kind of greenish, I don't know what color you would call that, like a greenish gray primarily for the most of the coloring of the figure. And they've got these gold, not gold, but kind of burgundy accents there kind of giving like markings and symbols there, just kind of on the top. I love the fact that all the Predators are always unique to one another, that even like, kind of like Klingons, really, their crest, their crown varies from figure to figure, and even like their markings will change out too. The mandibles also, the exposed opened mouth, also gives you a different take, being something that's more of a lighter violet. Usually at times the alternate uh, head portrait, actually, you know what, I just uh, happen to have, look at the size difference here. Just in case anybody needs to, you know, to know one from the other, this is the assassin, this is the emissary. You can see like even the size difference between the interchangeable heads. And normally the portrait for Predator may have a pink interior for the mandible mouth. This one here has almost like a, I don't know, kind of a an eerie sort of death-like purple to it. It looks like it's just like, it, it's the harbinger of death just again love the head portraits though and really like if you look at the two of them size by side size by size one is so much bigger than the other one right here 
Before we swap out the head, I think what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to take the blade off. I don't want to temp lady fates by keeping that on just in case it falls forward. I don't want that snapping off. So I'm going to take that off just for the time being. And I want to show you guys the difference between the two head portraits. I mean, both are strong contenders for what you want to decide on finally displaying on your shelf. I'm kind of leaning towards this one a little bit more, but I got to admit that both of them look equally good. There's something about the one that has the closed mouth that kind of reminds me of a bulldog. You know, with the bulldogs that usually have like the teeth sticking out from the bottom of their lips. You know, they're kind of like a bulldog. No, maybe not. Very, very, very cool sculpts though on both of these. Now, let's say somebody has thrown out the question, swapping out the heads. Well, the swapping out the heads are no different than any other predator. You're just doing it with a larger piece of plastic. Luckily, though, they have still continued not to switch back to larger circular ball joints. These narrow pegs, these little cylinders of plastic, do just as good the service of swapping the heads out as the ball joints. It just means that you're not going to gamble the chance of breaking the ball joints. So we're going to go ahead. Apply a little bit of pressure. There we go. Just a little bit of pr pressure. Kind of twist that in place. And there we go. There's the alternate head sculpt there. And again, just to show you the difference between the two, there's the there's the former, there's the, the latter. Again, they look so good. Oh, it'd be so hard to decide which one I want to ultimately go with. I'm probably going to go with this one because it just looks more ferocious. Just doing one last final quality check. I just want to make sure that head sculpt's completely in place. And then we'll move on with the rest of the figure. Now, the figure kind of, uh, you know, again, has a mutated look to it. Veins and, like, markings here, which you normally wouldn't find to see on a Predator, is now here. Kind of the color scheme reminds me of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. That kind of same similar color scheme. You see visible uh, kind of scales and spines, which you normally wouldn't see on a Predator. Even like the shoulder seems a little bit more mutated than what you would normally find. To the credit of NECA Toys, like credit was needed for NECA Toys, but I really like the fact that they've added like the type of plastic that they use. Uh, reflect a light in the way that just kind of makes it look almost wet. Not quite wet. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Even like I love the, these little bands that are on it. Something, again, you wouldn't normally expect to find on a Predator. These little strips here of, I don't know if it's bone or if it's just veins sticking out. Like so much of it looks so synthetic in the sense that it wouldn't be organically created. This is something, again, the Predators would have continued to perfect in the labs. And uh, again, the end product here is just an 11 foot tall monstrosity. Kind of wish that it could have done a little bit more. I don't know what more damage it would have done, but I would have loved to see, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I would have liked to see a couple more deaths. I don't know how many more deaths do you really need in Predator. The film really wasn't great, unfortunately. As good as this guy was, the film wasn't very good. Uh, it does have the shoulder gauntlets, or the forearm gauntlets. As you can see, there's some nice detailing there done in the silver and a little bit of uh, like red, kind of an off red, kind of a dark pink and blue. You remember this part was the part that has the caster that would have been replaced out. This would have then popped out, stuck out, depending on, again, how you want to have that displayed. And then he's got the other one that looks very similar, other than the fact it's got the little slot there to house the very large, very giant, and yet very fragile blade that, again, can tap into there. We've already been there. You guys remember that part of the review. Kind of got it that Predator style of loincloth. It's not quite a loincloth, but you know what I mean. It's got some forged that looks like metal there on the sides and a lo located on there uh, also on the back. And then you've got the continuation of the red stripes running through this kind of greenish gray body there's the feet large giant feet to the credit also i like the fact that there's articulation in the toes they put that in there as well that can also contribute to the figure giving you problems down the road with posability because i hope that these aren't going to go the same route as some of the xenomorph figures that have developed looseness especially where on the hind legs that hinge is working the opposite way sometimes those get loose and as a result of it the figure uh, does get uh, problems standing so you may want to make use of a display stand for this guy okay so let's look at this guy's posability his head technically rotates all the way around i don't know why you would want to do that with the figure but it is available there if you want hinges up and down left and right kind of a rock back and forth there left and right you can move the arms out now here's the problem unfortunately with doing that you move the arms out but unfortunately it kind of stops here just by the nature of the way that the shoulder is sculpted 
And due to, of course, the design, the initial design of the way it looks in the film, it's not like NECA Toys is kind of taking some luxuries. Uh, unfortunately, it does limit bringing those arms out. I mean, there's the hinge kind of down, but you're not going to be able to move the arms out very much at all. You can rotate them still all the way around as a swivel on the forearm, so you can rotate the arm technically all the way around, and you can hinge it back and forth. It actually does have a double hinge on the elbow, uh, although the forearm guard here... Uh, does unfortunately kind of impede a full hinge. You get one single hinge, but then to kind of get that secondary hinge, this is sort of obstructing that. So you really can't move it as much as you would want to. The hands rotate all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth. Ideal for grabbing and throwing around that poor. Am I the only one that felt really bad for that fugitive predator? Well, I, I guess that was the whole point of it. This poor fugitive predator comes to earth and gets pursued by this armored assassin. Uh, the upper torso does have a ball joint. Very stiff, unfortunately, but I'd rather a stiff joint than uh, an overly loose joint. And then it also has a secondary joint right there. Additionally, a ball joint. Legs split out. You'll notice, though, as you split the legs and do any bit of moving, they've given it a ratchet joint. Probably as a solution to a posable problem, a plausible problem in which the figure may give you some difficulty standing with loose legs being an issue down the road. Ratchet joints usually are a smart way to kind of work around that. The ratchet kind of keeps things retained and prevents the legs from getting loose and floppy. So I'm glad they actually utilized that there. Does have a, a double hinge on the knee. I do have a tough time bending that secondary hinge joint on the knee. But again, for this size of figure, I'd rather a really tight joint than a loose joint that's just going to flop around on me. And then lastly, the hind leg, or I guess the back section where kind of like the back calf area, a little further down from the calf, has a hinge joint. And you can also rotate that back and forth. Bring that back a bit. And then you also have a hinge on the foot. And that rocks back and forth as well. As I said, it's not necessarily a figure that's always going to give you problems, but just by the nature of the, the size of the figure and the construction for its feet, it may, pause, it may cause a plausible problem uh, down the road with getting this guy to stand. Of course, if you want to get into dynamic poses for the assassin, you may want to find yourself doing what I did and utilizing a display stand because really as great as this guy looks and I would love to put and incorporate the blade in for his displaying, I don't want the figure to fall over. This is something again that you may have to periodically just kind of tweak the feet, tweak the legs until you finally get a firm planting and once you get a firm planting, Hopefully he's not going to fall over. But I would say, though, I mean, even if you see the struggling I'm having with near the end of this review, trying to get this figure to stand, I would suggest using a display stand. Just use a display stand, surrender to the idea that the stand is going to help aid the figure, because really the last thing you would want to do is for the Assassin Predator to fall over on you. When the time comes to display my figures, I have no problems whatsoever recommending to people to use display stands. For starters, it kind of gets you outside the realm of always just displaying your figures straight in museum poses. Display stands can come very much in handy to put them in dynamic poses. So like a Jason Voorhees, for example, if you want him stalking camp counselors at Crystal Lake, you really want to have him in a walking or running pose, something you can only really pull off with a display stand. But then sometimes there's figures that rely on display stands. Big kind of figures like Xenomorphs, for example, just the way that they're constructed or larger than life figures like the Armored Assassin right here. It's kind of my one nitpick with this figure release. Wish that NECA Toys could have utilized and incorporated a display stand because I really do think a figure like this needs a display stand just for its way it's constructed. First and foremost, it's a tall figure. Then you've got additional plastic in the upper torso making a little top heavy. And then on top of that, you've got similar leg construction to that of a Xenomorph. Chalk that all up, add that all up, and it causes a figure that could be more inclined to fall over than it will standing upright. I've managed to balance it in a pretty decent enough way, still getting him in a dynamic pose, but I will stress this though, this guy really needs a display stand. Whether you're able to pick one up on the side or really NECA Toys should have included one first and foremost, this guy really does need a display stand to guarantee you that he's gonna look just as good as he does now as he will tomorrow and he's not gonna be ending up on the floor anywhere. That's, I've had that happen. That's so sad and heartbreaking to come into a collection room only to find a figure has fallen off your shelf onto the floor and something has broken along the ways. Don't do that. Use a display stand. Play it safe. I think it's I think that's for bikes, but 
and I think it's for helmets, but still play safe. Use a display stand. That's that's your PSA for this review. Uh, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Armored Assassin Deluxe Action Figure in all its splendor is available now in comic book stores and retail stores if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. If you have managed to pick it up, or based on this review, let me know down below what you guys think of the figure. It has NECA really knocked one out of the park for an interesting enough designed character from a mediocre movie. There, I said it again. The Predator wasn't very good at all. Assassin Predator was probably one of the best highlights of the film. The rest of it really sucked. I'm just going to say it really sucked. If you guys are new to this channel, hey, hi, come on in. Welcome aboard. Uh, if you guys are uh, regulars to this channel, thank you for that. Either way, though, if you are new or long-time viewers and just not, never got around to hitting that subscribe button, why not do that right now? It'll guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, for the most part, you'll get notifications. There's also a bell notification that can kind of aid you with that. I don't know if that 100% guarantees that new videos you'll be alerted to, but at the very least, it will be a helpful tool. So make sure you turn on that bell notification and stay tuned because we're going to have a look at some upcoming NECA reviews in future videos as well. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.